Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. I hope you're feeling great. I'm really excited to give you a sneak peek of what is coming on 22nd of November 2021. My three newest stamps that I've designed for Paper Arcee will be out. Can you guess what they are about? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know in the comments below if you want me to appear live on YouTube on the release week. Maybe on Friday 26th at 10 p.m. UK time, which is 6 p.m. US Eastern time. That's just two weeks away. We can catch up live on Friday. I can read and respond to your live comments and questions. And I can show you everything about the release, lots of samples and many, many things. So you know what new projects will come next on my YouTube channel. If you don't want to miss this live event and any other new video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the ring bell button so you'll get notified when I go live. Okay, now let's go back to today's card, which I've created with just one stencil, lots of infusions, some paints and inks, and quite a bit of crunch paste. Let's get started. I'm using Smoothie Heavy cardstock as my base paper, and I'm applying infusions. This one is Olive Tree, then it comes Golden Sands, which is a yellow, and then it will come Rusty Car, which is an orange. These are powder pigments and it has walnut crystals as well, so you will see them react now that I will be spritzing with water. So just see how they pop up. And then I'll be mixing them, applying water here and there, and applying some heat or more, pow more water and drops, so then they react as I kind of want. You cannot predict exactly what is going to happen because every one that you create of these will be different to the rest. But more or less you can expect, um, well, a lot of water, a lot of movement and yeah, um, many marks and many effects that you can get depending on what you do. So I keep on working on the surface. As you can see, this paper allows a lot of water to come in and it, it well, it's a very good one. I really like to work with them because it really, really hands a lot of water. So I keep on applying more water, more heat until I actually get what I like. And at this point it wanted more color. So I go back and apply the same colors on the same positions. So then it's more intense. And if there is something that it's too much, then I just remove it a little bit with the towel. And you need to kind of be quick before it actually dries because they dry permanent, okay? So if you don't want them there, you kind of need to remove them as soon as possible. You may not be able to remove everything, but that's okay. I mean, it will add more charm <laughs> to your project. So then basically by applying more water and more heat, you keep on getting different results. And the more you move, move the things then the more the walnut gets dissolved and the more brownish you'll get and the more vintage look and now for the bottom part more olive tree which is that green and more water and then basically just move it around until you kind of like what you get and I love the paper after all these um, water and all these infusions. It kind of has even like a leather look, I don't know, or fabric look, because it's been so damaged by the water. But it's not actually damaged because it doesn't peel off or anything, but it has like a lot of um, texture on top. I don't know. I like it very much. It's just that it's a bit too wobbly and maybe you kind of want to press it in between books for the next steps. That would be a good idea to avoid what is happening to me. Well, uh, later on you will see. So now I'm adding some splashes with a splatter brush and everything that is on my table. And once I'm happy, I will try everything. And remember, once it's dry, it's permanent. So you'll get it there. So now it will be a good time to actually press this into two piles of books or something and let it for a day. Or maybe pass it through a laminator to make sure that it's kind of flat. But if you don't have the time or the patience, you can carry on as I did here. I added some Distress ink on the edges and now I'm adding with some permanent ink. That one is Versafine Claire, uh, Sukineko, it's the pine cone one. I'm adding the title, Learn from Nature. And now I'm going to apply Grunge Paste. 
So here, having a flat surface would be much better for the next steps that I'm doing because I'm applying a stencil that has three layers. So it will have the mushrooms bottoms and then the tops and then the dots. And I'm trying to make like a 3D as much as I can. I'm mixing some infusions golden sands with crunch paste to tint it and get it getting my first layer, which is going to be yellowish. So I'm just applying this through my stencil to kind of create the first base for my mushrooms. So this is more or less a successful step, <laughs> but you will see that building up layers, it will be much more complicated later on because the paper is not completely flat, but well, I'll manage, you will see more or less. <laughs> so now I'm adding some kind of a reddish paint. This is called blood orange and I didn't like how it turned out. It was a bit too pink. So I added a bit more of infusions, the rustic car to make it more orangey. So it became more reddish kind of. So then I'm going to apply the cup or the top of the mushrooms. And here um, the paper was a bit crumbled still. So then some of the garnish paint went underneath. I think it would be better maybe if you don't need to give a 3D effect, it may be better to just apply paint rather than grunge paste and also having a flat surface would totally <laughs> work much better. But I kind of worked it out and grunge paste is pretty forgiving actually. So you can, until it's dry, you can remove it a little bit or even touch it with your finger as I'm doing here and kind of shape it to the way that you want a little bit, not too much, but a little bit you can do. And then I'm just trying this and then I'm adding even a little bit more ink on top to make it more reddish. So just rusty hinge in from Distress Ink, but you could add anything if you wanted this more red or actually starting with a red, red <laughs> paint as I started. And now the last and final layer is going to be the dots. So again, uh, I'm working on a very bulky uh, layer at the moment because it has two uh, grunge paste layers underneath. So the actual dots are not in a completely sur flat surface. So it happens that basically some of the grunge paste goes underneath. So you'll see me again trying to redefine those dots a little bit. So for me at the moment, it looks like, oh my gosh, what a disaster. <laughs> but well, more or less, I kind of fix it with some uh, scissors first, but then I move on to some needles. So the bottom part of the needle, not, not the pointy bead, but the, the other part where you will put the thread through. And then after that, uh, everything is kind of clean. Then I'm adding more red on top just to cover everything basically. Um, with a little bit more reddish. So I'm adding that touch. And also by applying this red, I think I'm kind of getting a bit, a deeper layer uh, on the mushrooms and more definition. So I'm just adding that there everywhere, basically, to darken up those mushrooms a bit more. I don't know, in my mind, I mean, the whole card is a bit, um, well, muted tone. And then these mushrooms just stand out too much for me, for my taste. So I needed to kind of tweak them and make them a bit more vintage and a bit more, I don't know, rustic <laughs> or grungy, if you wanted uh, to call them that way. So I'm just using this uh, Zig uh, pen. It's a brush pen and it's super flexible. The tip is really a brush, so you can uh, paint very, very well. And of course it's a dye ink so it will not cover 100% everything but it will work okay for what I need basically so I'm just adding the red everywhere so I don't see um, the yellow underneath and then I'm adding that texture and you can see how different the three mushrooms looked from the one on the left and now that the red is done then I'm going to just add with a brown color some um, lines around the edges of the mushroom again so then it's a bit of a shadow and i'm also going to add some detail so to define a little bit those um, um, feet or foot <laughs> of the actual mushroom and that would look nicer i think and a little bit more shadow with that color 
so that will be it for my mushrooms and then I'll move on to the title and the base of the card they look much better now at least I like them more so now I'm going to assemble the card I just painted a slightly larger uh, surface with a, a fresco paint um, French Rose this is my favorite color to go for um, framing my different cards I think it matches very much with all the colors that I used and by doing this also I'm flattening my surface because the surface underneath is pretty flat and I guess I should have done this from start that would have been much better for my mushrooms but well now it will be better for the title so I'm going to use grunge paste on top of the inked area but I'm going to shift it so I'm going to shift it up and left and then it will cast a shadow down and right you will see it later so I'm applying that on top pretty um, generous first but then I'm going to just clean and remove all the excess from the grunge paste and then when you lift it ta -da, you get like a shadow I really love this effect and once it's dry I can dry it with a heat tool I'm just adding a little bit of touch with the stress crayon just to mute it a little bit more and that will be it this is the card for today I hope you like it if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel and remember that my new stamps and stencils will be out really really soon on the 22nd of November so a new video will come up then and then on the 26th of um, November so that Friday of the release week I'll be also live on YouTube so then we can catch up together and I can explain to you everything about the release thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye